Welcome to another exciting hour of Bruiser Bedlam. I'm Terry Sullivan, back with us by popular demand once again, Dr. Jerry Grant, to bring us his insights on all the wrestlers we're about to see in this hour. A lot of news to talk about and a lot of great wrestling action to see, Doctor. Well, Terry, I'm just overwhelmed by how many fans had uh, requested that I come in here and do the show with you. And uh, I had only done this, agreed to do it for a one-time thing. And this is, I believe, my third week on the yeah. show now. And I'm just uh, so happy to be here. And like I said, I might have to reevaluate my position a little bit on these fans because uh, uh, a few months ago, I wasn't getting all this concern from the fans, but maybe I brought some of that on myself. So I'm not saying anything except uh, thanks a lot for having me on here. And uh, anytime you want me to come in, I'd be more than happy to. Well, certainly you are always welcome because we do appreciate your professional insights. And opening the program today, Doctor, the World Heavyweight Wrestling Champion. Can you be neutral about this guy? Can you give Absolutely. us an honest opinion about Absolutely. Rex Steiner, even though he defeated your pet, the great Wojo? Well, yeah. I'm going to tell you something right now. As you may or may not know, Wojo has gone all over the country as four years as champion, accepting challenges from everybody. Challenging other people that claim to be world champion, that all fell on deaf ears from... Uh, uh, from New York to Charlotte to Atlanta to, uh, to Minnesota to, to Texas. Uh, Wojo had a flat $100,000 challenge match for four years. Any of the champions would meet him. It all fell on deaf ears. Yeah. Uh, he challenged people from the audience for $10,000. Uh, all they had to do was put up their bodies. He didn't have to put up $1 return. And uh, I'll tell you the truth. Right now, of all the people claiming to be world champion, Scott Recksteiner is far and away the best of the lot. There's nobody else on any other television show, any other promotion claiming to be world champion that can beat Scott Rex Steiner. And you can take that to the bank, because Dr. Graham said so. I guess you can be neutral. Let's go to ringside now for the world champion, Scott Rex Steiner. And another appearance by the excellent world heavyweight champion, Scott Rex Steiner. Terry Sullivan at ringside with Sam Botek Jr. As we hold on to the beautiful belt, the world championship belt, symbolic of supremacy in the world of pro wrestling. Good handshake. It looks like we're gonna have a nice, clean match here, Terry. Well, let's hope so. Whoops, Scott moves right in, takes a leg out from under Evans, who's into the ropes. Referee will call for the break. You will see some dazzling skill from the world heavyweight champion, Scott Rexdonner. The moves he makes are so well done. Oh, gee, oh, did you see that? Lifted him up, looked like he was gonna take him over in a some kind of a suplex. Instead, dropped him right back down on his shoulders, and I'm surprised Evans got up from that. Obviously, yeah. wrestlers have the very uh, well-trained bodies, and that was why he was able to do so. Down goes Evans. And Rex Steiner, beautiful drop kick. The amazing Evans. thing about Rex Steiner is he can take that body. I mean, it's so fine-tuned. He can move it at will. For any given move, if he has to change in midair, he can do it. He is so skillful and so smooth. Rex Steiner clamps on a side headlock, putting in the pressure to Evans. Evans hurls him off. Rex Steiner into the ropes. He caught him with the clothesline, and down goes Evans. Evans hoisted up. Body slam. Oh, and that shook the ring. Almost broke the ring. I <laughs> sure did. Rex Steiner looks like he's setting him up. He does. Suplex. This always amazes me, the strength of Rex Steiner. He is. Rex Steiner back onto the referee. And Rex Steiner hauls off late. A good forearm in on Evans. Evans is in the corner. Yep, and another body slam coming up. Power slam by Rex Steiner. That could be it. We've got no. Nope. Nope. Evans able to kick out of that one. Scott Rex Steiner has such an immensely bright future. And showing you their little display of fists. Uh-oh, reversal. The champion into the corner, and Evans is right there with a shoulder block. Evans grabs a headlock on the world heavyweight champion. Scott Rex Steiner certainly does not live an easy life as the world heavyweight champion. He's always got to be looking over his shoulder, Sam. Well, the one thing about it, too, is he never turns down an opponent. He's been challenged by the best of them, from the Wojo all the way down, and he has never said no. He and Wojo have had some hellacious battles recently, battle. some real street fights. Evans again with the world champion in the corner. Certainly every wrestler who gets in there with the world champion, if he's worth anything at all, is going to be at his absolute best. 
not to pass up the opportunity. Oh. Atomic drop by the champion. You never know when you're going to get another match with the world champion, so you've got to make the best of it when you do. So Rex Steiner consequently always has to be at his best. If he has an off night, good suplex. He could lose that belt. Just like that. In for the count, only one. Evans still has a lot left. Rex Steiner's laid some heavy moves on him, but Evans is a big guy. Again, effortlessly. Rex Steiner picked him up, power slam. Oh, Rex Steiner's going to the ropes. And we could be setting him up here for the one and a half superfly. And there he goes, perching on that top rope, getting ready. And here he comes. Ooh. <laughs> that a beautiful move. That is that a is. dazzler. Victory for the world heavyweight champion, Scott Rexsteiner. This gets better and better every time he steps into that ring. He sure does. Winner and still WWE heavyweight champion of the world is Scott Rexsteiner. Another excellent match with the world heavyweight champion, Scott Rexsteiner. No, I didn't mean to say that he could not be beaten. I don't have misunderstood. He can be beaten. He just can't be beaten by any of the other men claiming to be world champion. Hey, wait a but minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's going on out here, Graham? I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. You know something you told me? You says, I'm only gonna come out here one week. I'm not gonna try to steal your job. But that's exactly what you're doing. Who do you think you are, huh? Do you think you're some kind of tough guy? Is that what it is, huh? Well, what about that, huh? Hey, 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 just sit hey, out hey, there. Hey, what are you come doing? On. Now, wait a minute. Wait. I don't want to be accused what? of being some kind of bully. So let's take come these on. off. Here you go, what are you doing? What are you doing, Graham? Huh? You're a tough guy, aren't you? You're a real tough guy. Well, I'll tell you what. You're all done. Here, what? you know something? You're all done with this show. Here, let me adjust this thing for your leg for you. Oh, Graham. Hey, okay. hey. It's all over, ladies and gentlemen. Let's just forget Aww. it, Graham. You got to be kidding me. You gotta be kidding me. Okay. <clears throat> you gotta be kidding me. You're yes, skating sir. on thin ice, pal. Oh, Sullivan, what are you doing to this lavalier now? Let's get this. What justification do you have? Who do you think you are coming out here like that? Just he could have you arrested for that, you know. Sullivan, are you talking to me? This is you my show. You think you're show. a pretty big man. Your you show. Don't talk to oh, me like yeah. That. Your show. That's right. You it's know called something, Sullivan? Carter Bedlam, the isn't it? People yeah. have demanded that the world's most highly intelligent wrestler. Do this commentary. Right, the people are and sick that's to why death I'm you. here, you know, because I am, without a doubt, the world's most highly intelligent wrestler, slash manager, slash talent agent, so on and so forth. Now, let's get on with the show. People are sick to death of you, pal, in case you haven't noticed it. You know something, Sullivan? You misinterpret sick for love. Because oh, I know yeah. that the people love me. I am here. Because of popular demand. And you, and, and you, and you get off on uh, knocking a guy around who's in a wheelchair with a broken leg and a broken what shoulder? What are you talking about knocking around? I simply escorted him off the set. No, oh, give me a This break. is my show, Sullivan. You give know it. Give me a hey, break. Hey, he got out here telling me I knew exactly what he was going to do. He was going to worm his way in and work me out. But ha ha, it didn't work. <laughs> I think we've had more than enough of you, pal, and I hope that when we come back, ladies and gentlemen, that something can be done to keep this guy from being here anymore. We'll <laughs> return in a moment. <laughs> Off the bat, give you the address for Bruza Bedlam for those of you who'd like to drop a line to your favorite wrestlers or for those of you who belong to groups and organizations and you're interested in adding a little cash to your treasury. If you're interested in getting the details on how your group can sponsor Bruiser Bedlam right in your hometown, you can write to Bruiser Bedlam, Post Office Box 6883, Toledo, Ohio, 43612. Now let's talk about tomorrow night, 8 o'clock at the Hotel Sofitel. It is finally here on the main event. The world heavyweight champion Scott Rexsteiner puts the title on the line against the mysterious Jason. You will also see tag team action. It'll be the great Wojo teaming up with Chris Carter. They'll meet Calypso Jim and Supermax El Bracero. Also on that program, the world tag team champions will be in singles action. It'll be the Polynesian Wildman against Rookie of the Year 1986. The popular Rick Sampson and Denny Cass on that program. He's got a tough challenge in Prince Mama Mohammed. The Golden Lion also will be on the program. That is all happening tomorrow night at the Hotel Sofitel. Remember, parking is absolutely free at the Vistula Garage right across from the Sofitel on the corner of Jackson and Summit Streets in downtown Toledo. 8 o'clock is action time tomorrow night. One other bout on that card that we did not mention yet in his 
it's got to be a classic match when you finally get in there. We all know, we've seen on television all the brutal things that Bulldog Don Kent has done, trying to humiliate and embarrass you, and I guess has succeeded to some extent. But tomorrow night, you and he will be together in the ring. Yes, sir, Terry. You know, he has total disregard for my fans as well as myself. I'd like to thank my fans for all the nice gifts that they've been giving me. And that Bulldog Don Kent, he just, he just makes me so angry. I've been, he's bushwhacked me two times, and he's talked bad about old Prairie Moon. You know, I've been training harder for this match than I have any match so far. Bulldog Don Kent, when I get a hold of you, I'm going to rip out your spine and whip you with it. That's tomorrow night, ladies and gentlemen. Cowboy Rex Bodie will face off against Bulldog Don Kent. Don't forget Rex Steiner against Jason at the Sophie Tell tomorrow night. Ladies and gentlemen, Terry Sullivan back and unfortunately <laughs> still with us. You, you know something, Sullivan? No. I'll tell you, I love it. You know, one of uh, Jerry Graham's pet sayings over the years was, uh, you can do anything that you're big enough to do and anything that you're bad enough to do. Well, I guess I'm pretty big and bad, don't you think? You know, I'll tell you one thing, too. You know, I know that uh, this corporate look, I know that uh, Dr. Jerry Graham, you see, he loves these Miller sunglasses. You know, these are his. Mm -hmm. I guess I was big enough to take them. Oh, yeah, Let's big see. man. Oh, God, yes. Big man. Yes, Real yes, proud, yes, aren't you? Yes, well, Dr. Graham, are you watching? Are you looking? How do I look in your sunglasses? Pretty good, huh? Okay. How long is this going to go on? I mean, are you, you, you want to get to talk about the wrestling match, the program at all? Yes, Terry, let's move on with Carter Bedlam today. and. What do we have coming oh. up next? I, I, being the world's most highly intelligent well, wrestler, I'm sure you could use a commentary from me. Well, why don't you just carry the ball here? You just tell the people what's coming up. Okay, you don't need me, well, obviously. Coming up on Carter Bedlam now is a match between uh, Mohammed Jihad Saad, the freedom fighter, and he's taking on John Evans. And someone spoke. Uh, I believe it's Farmer Luke. Is it Farmer Luke? I believe it is. <laughs> oh, Sullivan. I don't think How you're doing I make so a good so far. Like that. that are you sure, Sullivan? Well, I think there's one way to find out. W wait a minute now. What's going on here? I mean, Enough of this guy. Let's, let's, let's go to the, see the match. Wait a minute. Let's, let's go to the match. I don't go, uh, uh, uh. This match is one fall with a 15-minute time limit. Introducing first from Matewan, West Virginia, 420 pounds, Farmer Luke. This is and his opponent from Beirut, Lebanon, weighing 230 pounds. The Lebanese freedom fighter, Mohammed Jihad Saad. Gary Warren Chak, our ring announcer. Mohammed Saad rolling up 
the flag of his homeland. Muhammad Jihad Saad, certainly a double threat these days, both as one of the top wrestlers in the country, as well as a pretty good manager as well. Saad ready to do battle here with a gentleman much bigger than he. There's no doubt about it, he's bigger, but Saad is tough. You gotta give him that credit, Terry. He is, he's, he's tough as nails. He's fast. Whoa, nobody went anywhere on that one. Another collision. I think you better two. come up with another strategy. Oh, oh there he did. He did it. Close line. And Saad drops down with an E across the throat. He's in for the count. We, this could be it. No, sir. Strong kick out by Farmer Luke. Muhammad Jihad Saad with the boot. Saad's so compact, and he can just moves in, takes move his man so down. Fast. So fast how he can move. He is. He's a very accomplished wrestler when he wants to be. He's got a bag of dirty tricks, Terry. His, oh, endless bag. As big as Santa Claus's bag. I think so. Well, that's just for America, he says, as Saad chokes Farmer Luke over the middle rope. Luke's on his back. Saad, very determined individual, drops down with a boot. Ooh. And a headbutt by the Lebanese freedom fighter. Saad with a knee into the side of the jaw. Off to the ropes, and here he comes. Big elbow drop by Saad in again for this the count. Be it. Nope. Again, only a one and barely that. So Saad is going to have his work cut out for him, trying to put the big man down. And the big man trying to do something here, throwing some forearms in on Saad, rushes in. Whoa! That knocked a little of that Lebanese blood out of him. <laughs> it sure did. Luke again bounces and misses. Ooh. Ooh. That's a bad miss. That could spell the end of the match for Farmer Luke, who was doing all right for himself momentarily. Saad climbing the ropes Ooh. and comes down. Ooh. He caught that vicious. knee right in the throat, Terry. Vicious, vicious move there. That's He's got a leg hooked. That's We've got a fear. That we'll had to hurt. We'll go to Gary Warren check for the decision. The winner of the match, ladies and gentlemen, Mohammed Jihad Saad. Muammar Gaddafi, my good friend, will see this match. Look what I do to big, stupid American people. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Muhammad Jihad Saad defeats Farmer Luke. You know the stand, by the way. What's so funny now? Sullivan, you know something? You are, honestly, a true definition of a nerd. Because that's what you are. You're a nerd, man. I, you know, I can't believe it. Well, but did you see the display of wrestling technique by Muhammad Jihad Saad, the no, freedom I saw a fighter? Display. Certainly a, a true high-caliber representative of his country. Perhaps. Certainly a top contender. Mm -hmm. Certainly always dangerous in the ring. Very dangerous. And a very, very convincing victory there over Farmer Luke. Very convincing. And you know something? I can just feel right now how the ratings for this show are going up since I'm back out here. Oh, I'm feeling good. Yeah, right.
Terry Sullivan back, still unfortunately with uh, Chris Carter. I'm gonna show you a World Tag Team Championship match right now. You probably were watching recently when we showed the, this match. We're gonna join it in progress tonight. An excellent opportunity here for Cowboy Rex Bodie and El Bracero, the challengers for the World Tag Team Champions. Well, I would just like to say this about this particular match, and, and that is that once Mohammed Jihad Saad <clears throat> took over the team of the Polynesian Wild Man and Prince Mama Muhammad, they went right to the top. And since they have been under his tutelage and guidance, they have remained the WWA World Tag Team Champions, which is quite an honor, Terry, and I'm sure you well know. They had another manager oh, before, yeah, and uh, they just the guy couldn't do nothing with them. So, yeah, you know. yeah, I figured that was coming up. Just one word for you. Don't get too comfortable in that chair. Just Why not? It's my show. Just, I, I'm at home. Well, it's not your show. Just don't get too comfortable. Mark my words. Let's go see the conclusion now. We'll join it in progress here, showing you the remaining several minutes of this exciting Tag Team Championship match. Referee is letting uh, both of them stay in. They're giving them a lot of leeway here on the double team. Ooh, double clothesline. Legally, they have a five count to get out. The other guy, once the tag is made. Look at the welts they've raised on Cowboy Rex Bowie. Oh, really? He's really taken his lumps so far. Bodie desperately needs a tag now. As he's got to get that second win back here. The wild man ripped away at his face. Drapes him over that middle rope, throttling him over that second rope. The referee is there to call for the break. Bracero in. Referee will have to deal with them as they double team again, the world champions. Bodie's got to get to that corner and the tag team champions are going to do everything, Sam, to anything they can to keep him from making that tag. They want to keep him in there. Exactly right. And this referee is getting in one corner while they do punishment out in the other. And this is what's happening to Bodie where he's getting hurt. Whoa, uh -oh. beautiful arm drag on the Prince. And Bodie's going to make that tag. He he's got, got it. it. Watch out. Here comes Bracero. And brother, is he ready? Here comes spark plug. Here he comes. Oh, wait a minute. The referee didn't see it. And look at Saad working on Bodie. Saad's biting him. And Bracero's after Saad again. And he caught him. And Bracero just pounded away. I don't know if you caught that or not. It was over, sort of over in the corner. Uh-oh. And right down below you, Bracero. And the wild man go at it. The prince is getting involved. The count is going him. in. A melee here. That count is going in. It's at three. All four of them out of the ring. The count now is at, I believe, seven. They've Someone's got a ten get back count, in Sam. Here. Someone's got it. Well, Bodie's back. Bodie's been thrown back into the ring. And here's the prince. The count is over. The prince with a headbutt into the midsection. A boot into Bodie now. Looks like Polynesian wild man's back in, going after El Brazero. All four of them going at it again. The referee has totally lost control. There's no control. This is a melee. This is now this here is comes Saad. And uh oh. Hello. Uh oh, they've got Saad now. And Saad. Oh! The manager takes a header over the top rope. A drop kick by Bracero. Flying mare by Bodie. Bracero on Saad. Leg drop by Bodie. Ooh. Mama Mohammed out of the floor during all of this. Bracero is choking Saad with his own scarf. Referee may as well go home. He's tied, he's, he's choking, he's got Bodie. him tied to the pole. He's got him tied to the pole, He's Terry. hanging him as Bodie has the sleeper hold on Prince, or on the wild man. Oh, and El Bracero just brutalizing the Bracero's head of Bracero's going nuts on Saad. Bodie, meantime, with a headlock on the Polynesian wild man. Saad can't get away. He's tied down. He's hung. <laughs> He's got him hanging out to dry it, Terry. I guess, for heaven's sake. Cowboy. Uh oh, oh, oh Bracero. Oh, oh, my grabbing the stair. Oh, my. He dropped the steps. Jeez, did you hear that thud? All the way over here, unreal. And look, Bulldog, uh -oh, Bulldog Don Bulldog Kent. Here. Bulldog Don Kent, right in the bottom of your screen. Look at him heading out now. He came right over the top with that chain. 
He knocked the stuffing right out of Bodie. And Co Bodie Cowboy is down. Bodie is out of it. He got caught right in the head. Bracero is working with Prince Mama Mohammed on the outside of the floor as the referee continues to try to get Saad, get that scarf off his neck. Whoa, what? I don't believe this, Sam. The this turn is of events. Amazing. I can't believe the turn of events we've seen. The Cow wild man up to the top rope. And he's coming down on Bodie. Oh. oh, the flying body press. The referee turns around and the three count I goes in. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. What we've seen, Bulldog Don Kent coming out of the locker room, hitting Rex Bodie with a chain. Ladies and gentlemen, the winners and still World Tag Team Champions, Prince Mama Mohammed of the Polynesian Wildman. Cowboy Rex Bodie once again a victim of the vicious sneak attack from behind by Bulldog Don hey, Kent. Hey, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. A vicious sneak attack? You know, Sullivan, these are grounds for slander. Okay, what do you want to call it? Accusations like that? What do you want to call it? What I like to call it is when Don Kent snuck up to the ring and attacked Cowboy Rex Bowie. No, 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 that's not. And what I like to call is putting minds together. See, Saad and Kent have a little relationship between them. You know, sometimes Saad likes to, to count on Kent's experience for things, you know, and, and, and that's exactly what happened. And the people and you are misinterpreting exactly what happened. Once again, the WWA Tag Team Champions reign supreme. You better clean those glasses. Wow. That was a vicious sneak attack, and there's no other way to put it. By Bulldog Don Kent. Slander, and slander. I'm going to have to talk to Kent and his lawyer, because we're going to have to talk about you, too. Talk to him. It's indicative of the things that we have seen here time and time again in the arenas and on television, that this continuing thing between Kent and Cowboy Rex Bodie. Terrible, Terry. Maybe you ought to clean your glasses so you can see just what's going on. Well, we've been through this we, before. Hey, Terry, you know, everybody knows about your problem with the short-term memory loss yeah. now. <laughs> Let's take a good look at these yeah. films, okay? Well, I remember this, ladies and gentlemen. We've got more wrestling action coming.
We always get a lot of requests, ladies and gentlemen, to put the Bruiser Bedlam address on the screen. We're going to show it to you now. If you ever want to write any fan mail, drop a line to some of your favorite or maybe not some of your favorite wrestlers. Whatever is on your mind, you can write to us here. Or any groups and organizations who are interested in sponsoring an outstanding evening of Bruiser Bedlam, wherein we bring all the great stars of Bruiser Bedlam to your town for the benefit of your group, you can write to us. We'll send you all the details. The address for all the mail is Bruiser Bedlam, Post Office Box 6883, Toledo, Ohio, 43612. Now we're right on top of it. It's tomorrow night, 8 o'clock at the Hotel Sofitel. Bruiser Bedlam back in the Glass City tomorrow night. And remember, there is plenty of free parking at the Vistula Garage. That's absolutely free parking at the Vistula Garage in the corner of Jackson and Summit Streets. You'll see the Golden Lion on that car, the World Tag Team Champions in singles action, Prince Mama Mohammed against Denny Cass, Rick Sampson then to meet the Polynesian Wild Man, Cowboy Rex Bodie, and Bulldog Don Kent. That's going to be a great but yet a brutal match between Bodie and Kent tomorrow night. Then you're going to see in tag team action the great Wojo teaming up with Chris Carter. They'll face Supermax, El Bracero, and Calypso Jim. The main event for the world championship, it'll be We're back. Scott, yeah, right, Scott <laughs> Recksteiner. <laughs> what did you mention that name for, Sullivan? What's the matter with you? Well, Jason, 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 you control this guy. Jason, Jason. He doesn't have any control Jason, over this guy. Jason. Give me a break. He will, he will take on the World Heavyweight Champion. I guess I'm not supposed to say the name, right? Well, I'll comply. Now, you team up with this man, Chris Carter, against Bracero and Calypso Jim tomorrow night. Hey, that's right. I'm looking forward. I have an ax to grind. I don't like, I don't like Calypso Jim. I don't like Bracero. I'd still have that belt if it wasn't for those guys meddling in. And I feel real good about going into that ring with Chris Carter as my partner. Let me tell you, no matter, what, no matter what people say about him, he's a tough wrestler. Everywhere Carter goes, there's blood, there's guts, and there's action. And it's usually the guys that he's wrestling that are bleeding. Well, Carter and I are going to make a lot of blood flow tomorrow night. And watch out, Calypso Jim. I just might rip all those beads and all, those, all that hair out. I don't like guys that have fancy hair, Jim. I'm going to tear that hair right out. And Carter and I are just the guys that give you guys a good beating. You don't have any control over this man, do you? Sullivan, I have all the control that I need. Sullivan, would you like me to show the control I have? Would you like this no, ripped no, off? No, huh? no, not at all. No, I don't think you no, would, no, no. would you? You don't have to well, worry it's about tomorrow me. Tomorrow night, tomorrow night, the great Wojo has said it all about this Taco Bender and Calypso Jim. I'll tell you, I'm tired of Calypso Jim anyway. I'll sign the contracts over and over anytime I get a chance. But tomorrow night, tomorrow night is the night of revenge. Because I cannot mention his name, but the WWA Heavyweight Champion had better not, had better not show up because I said it before and I said it again. It is written that the sins of the father shall be visited upon the son. And tomorrow night, you're talking about Rex Steiner's father. Wait again, a minute, right? watch it now. What are you bringing his name up for, Sullivan? Do you want to find out the control that I have? Jason, stop! Jason! Now, wait a minute. Jason. Yeah, you, you can't control Sullivan, this guy. He's going to turn on you, You too. don't value your life. He will never turn on me, Sullivan. Sense. He will never turn on me. But tomorrow night, tomorrow night, WWA heavyweight champion, tomorrow night is mine and Jason's because it is the revenge that he so justly deserves. He will get tomorrow. That's right at the Hotel Sofitel. Now I know you people love me and you people will do as I say. So come and see this and watch the crowning of a new champion, a true champion amongst men. Too much. Tomorrow night, ladies and gentlemen, eight o'clock at the Sofitel.
Well, I see the next on the lineup today on Bruiser Bedlam. There's a match featuring Calypso Jim, a Texas death match. Oh, yeah, Calypso Jim against myself. Yeah. You know something, Terry? Oh, I'll tell you what, you know, Calypso Jim, he was just so psyched up for this match. He was so excited about this match that he went around for two weeks before that billing this match, like the shootout at the Ote Corral. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we apologize. Do you get it? No, the we OT Corral. For the get misinformed it? opinions <laughs> of this guy that we are forced to put up with here, segment after segment. You know, once again, don't get too comfortable in that chair. OT. Don't get too used to it. Just don't get too used to it because there's some powerful people taking a good, hard, long look at you and your actions out here and this. You talk about all the low things you have done earlier in the program Ooh. today, which you did to Dr. Jerry Graham, will not be forgotten. Let me tell you there something. There are some big hey. and powerful people, my friend, who saw Who are you talking happened. about, that fat slob Warren Shack? No, no, big no, no. Big deal. No, no, you no. You know something, Jerry Graham? I, want, I hope you're listening to me because you lied to me, and you don't lie to Chris Carter and get away with it, okay? You said one week. He overstayed his welcome. I let another week go by without saying well, anything he came about back it. By popular demand, which is more than you can no, say. No, popular demand. Let me let's clarify something right here. The people demanded the world's most highly intelligent wrestler, and that's why I'm here. Well, you know what? We're out of time. We'll be right back, man. Fans, with more in just a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, this Texas death match falls. Do not count. No time limit. No disqualification. Blood cannot stop this bout. When a man is pinned for the three count, at that point the referee puts in the count of ten. If the man cannot answer the ten count, the match is over, he loses. So whenever you see a one, two, three, at that point the referee begins the ten count. Introducing first in the ring, from the Motor City, at 244 pounds, Chris Carter. Accompanied by Jason. And his opponent from Kingston, Jamaica, 239 pounds, Calypso Jim. Along with the world champion, Scott Recksteiner. Terry Sullivan it. along with Sam Botek at ringside. And Sam, one of the most dangerous, brutal matches in professional wrestling here, the Texas Death Match. We're going to see one of the greatest matches in wrestling history tonight. I got a feeling, Terry. Virtually anything goes in this one. What's Carter got this Jason with him in there for? What is Jason here at all for? Moral or immoral support? I don't know. And there you see Jason, the mysterious man. The man, it's rumored, uh, has some extreme mental instabilities. Calypso Jim with the world champion, Scott Rexdotter in his corner. And we are set for action here. The Texas death match. Let's have the bell here and we'll get underway. Carter leaves the ring. There are no count outs on this match. The only way this Texas death bout can end, when a man has his shoulders pinned to the mat for the count of three, the referee then puts a 10 count on him. If he does not get to his feet before the count of 10 goes in, he loses. Ooh. Here's the classic match, the two partners, now enemies. Headbutt. Carter Wobbly, he takes another one. And Calypso Jim giving him all he's worth there. Rubber legs on Chris Carter now as Calypso Jim again. With about three in a row, three or four headbutts in a row there on Chris Carter. Not even Carter can take that kind of punishment for long, Terry. A lot of signs in the audience tonight, traitor. I think that says it all. It does. Certainly Chris Carter let a lot of people down and certainly the man that he let down most of all is the man he's facing in the ring now. I'll tell you, Terry, the hatred and the animosity these two have gotten going between them is 
It's phenomenal. And Carter's, it Carter's been cut open. They may just end it all tonight. An elbow smash to the head of Chris Carter. Carter is bleeding. He's about out of it now. Remember, it's not just the count of three, the pinfall, it's then the count of 10 after that. Oh, Carter's a bloody mess. Calypso Jim is slow, determined. He knows what he wants to do to this man. And look at Jason over there. Jason is standing in the corner almost like he's in a trance. He's motionless, he's not moving. Carter, flying on his back. Carter Sails across the ring. Carter can't take much more of this, Terry. Calypso Jim giving it all he's worth in the early moments of this Texas death match. And sails through the air again. Scott Recksteiner on the bottom right of your screen watches as his buddy Calypso Jim Ooh. gets a taste of revenge. A boot to the back of the head. <coughs> and Carter definitely having his problems here with Calypso Jim. Another headbutt. Now, let's see if we'll get a three count. Okay, we've got it. Now we get the 10 count. Now we go for the count of 10. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. A Carter back to his feet. Almost. Almost, Terry. Carter back into the corner now. And Calypso Jim hammers away. I can't believe the punishment that Calypso Jim's dishing out to Chris Carter. Carter falls back into the corner. Uh-oh. Manages to come up with a boot. Got Calypso Jim just below the face on that one. Carter's got to regroup himself here real fast. Carter's still groggy from all the punishment he's taken. A knee lift, a glancing blow hit Calypso Jim. Jason still motionless in the corner. And who knows what's going through that man's mind. Jim, Ooh. chest first into that corner. He hit it with his jaw. He hit it with his jaw and his throat. Carter holds off and lays one in on him. Across the wing goes Calypso Jim. Quite a match, vicious, brutal. We knew it would be going in, and certainly I understand the metal state Calypso Jim is in, and I'm interested in the state do you remember what was going through your mind at this particular point in the match? Uh, you had dished out a lot of punishment, but in turn had taken an awful lot also. Well, you dish it out and you take it in this business, Sullivan, but what's going through my mind is what goes through every wrestler's mind in any match, and that is to win. And certainly we all know how you win on more occasions than not. We'll return with the conclusion of the Texas Death Match in just a moment.
Well, we'll see if Mr. Chris Carter can back up all of the words that led up to this particular Texas death match. Without any further delay, let's get right back to a Texas death match rules prevail here as Chris Carter takes on Calypso Jim. Carter drops down with an elbow. Also bust those ribs up real fast. In on his man for the count. We've got a two and Calypso Jim kicks out. Good strong kick out by Calypso Jim. The chant of traitor going up. And you know who that's aimed at. Rightly deserved. Carter again positioning Calypso Jim for that pile driver. He's got him this time. Ooh. Ooh. Drops him down. That's got to be it for Calypso Jim. Calypso Jim looks like he's been cut open. We've got a one, a two, and that's all. He's, Carter. He's fighting to get Calypso able to kick out. That pile driver, Terry, will rearrange everything. Ooh, Carter just drove his head right into the mat. Carter hooks a leg. He's in. He's got a three count. Now we'll go for 10 as soon as Carter stands back. Carter being ordered back by the referee. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And Calypso Jim gets to his feet on the eight count. He's opened up bad. Calypso Jim, a bloody mess. Carter's going to work on that. Carter has also been busted open. Off the ropes goes Calypso. Ooh, he caught him with a flying fist. How much more punishment can Calypso Jim take? I don't know, Terry. He's taken that pile driver. That's the most recent oh, devastating finishing hold. That's awesome. Another three count on Calypso Jim. I don't know how much more he can take. He gets up after this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He got an eight count as Jason is menacing some of the ringside fans. Now yeah, he's turned his attentions back my to the ring. Wife, my wife. Your wife? Yes, my oh, wife. No. Carter. Look at him, biting away at the wound on Calypso Jim's head. This. What a disgusting sight. Chris Carter grabs himself a handful of hair, drives Calypso Jim head first into the turnbuckle, but Calypso that has no effect. Is a Watch out, Carter. Angry. That's the wrong area to attack Calypso. And with a headbutt, a leg hook, we've got a three count on Carter. Calypso Jim went three feet off the ground. <clears throat> One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Carter to his feet on the eight count. Carter. If either man stays down until the 10 count, that's it. Carter took a head blow from Calypso Jim that had to rattle everything that's in there, and there's probably not much. Oh, what an elbow in for the count again. And another three count, this time on Carter. We'll go for 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, Carter barely up on that one. I don't think Carter knows where he's at, Terry. That's very, very possible with the po pounding he's taken from Calypso Jim here. Carter whipped across the ring, over the top he goes. And the collision, both men down. I don't know what we'll do here. Whether we'll have a, oh, well, the referee counting both of them down for the three count, and now we'll have a double 10 count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Watch out though, Rex Steiner trips up Carter, 10. And that's it, the bell rings. The referee raises the hand of Calypso Jim. What a move on that one. What a finish. Jason has just hit Scott Recksteiner. Recksteiner and Jason are going at it blow to blow. And the winner, Calypso Jim. Jason is being hammered by Scott Recksteiner. And Recksteiner takes Jason down. Rex Steiner pounds away at the zombie man, Jason. Rex Steiner oh. and Jason going at it on the outside of the ring. 
Jason hammers one in on Rex Steiner. There's Rex Wojo Steiner. has come in here. The great Wojo has entered the ring. But Jason and Rex Steiner are going at it one on one. Wojo is trying to point out to the referee what happened here as Jason and Rex Steiner go at it on the outside. And the Wojo has just Pearl Harbor the referee. Oh, Wojo. Wojo goes after Calypso, Jim, and Carter. Jim's being double teamed by Carter. Rex Steiner and Jason are in the crowd. Wojo and Carter double teaming Calypso, Jim. As Jason and Rex Steiner. The referee's been knocked. Here, here comes, comes Alfred Sarah. Well, we've got three we've quarters got of the pressure here. in here now. I can't Words. believe. Woo. Words can't describe what you're seeing. I can't believe what's going on here. Bracero works away on Carter on the other side. Wojo and Calypso Jim go at it. The referee in vain trying to gain some order here. Headbutt by, by Calypso. Calypso Jim. This has turned into a three world war. Wojo's out of there. Carter whipped across the ring. Double back, body drop. Calypso Jim. Wojo pulling out Carter. What a fabulous match this was. I can't believe it. Well, Calypso Jim, the winner of this bout. Well, 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 what happened? Well, 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 what happened? That's what I'd like to know. I'll tell you what, you know, you're a great one for coming out and telling everybody, watch the tape, watch the tape. Well, did you see it? Because if you watched it, then you know. That, that low-life Scott Recksteiner. I'll tell you what, I had that match won. What are you talking about? I had Calypso about? Jim beat. What are you, what are you talking about? Don't act like that now. What's the what matter you, with you? What are you talking about, Recksteiner? What do you mean? What's it? Hey, I'll tell you what, Recksteiner. Scott you know Recksteiner was sitting in the front row I just minding his own business. Wait. You're a liar. I can't wait because you know something, Recksteiner. Oh, I'll tell you, I'm so happy about Jason. Because Recksteiner, because of what you did to me. <laughs> Revenge, remember? <laughs> Well, I must admit that when Scott... But you're a liar! About what? Be oh, you don't, don't do that to me, because you know about what? All I hear over and over again all the time is that we saw the tape and everybody knows. And now, when somebody does this to me, now you're going to act like... Oh, well, did what to you? Did what? I, God, Rex. Come on now. Just behave yourself. Oh, boy, One thing so I will admit, so though, the so thing so between thick. Scott Recksteiner and Jason, now that is obviously, Ooh, that's some serious geez. business there. These two were destined to collide. It's like two worlds colliding. I'll give you that. I'll tell you what, when Jason saw what Rex Steiner did to me, he was infuriated. I couldn't calm him down for one week. In fact, I had to put the old straitjacket on him and oh, put him in the room. You in admit the room. It. Just you admit for him it. to relax. Into the room with the straitjacket. Just forget I said that. Just forget it, okay? Oh, sure. Just forget it. I didn't say that. I didn't do nothing. Whoa. He was just like this. He says, okay. Well. So be it. Okay. That's it. And I we did, all saw I didn't, exactly I didn't what put, happened. I, I, I didn't put a jacket right. on him. I Ladies didn't put him in the we'll room. In I did not put a jacket on him.
Ladies and gentlemen, it's tomorrow night. Bruiser Bedlam back at the Hotel Sofitel in downtown Toledo. And what a card of wrestling action we have got. All action from the opening bout all the way up until that main event, which will be for the World Heavyweight Wrestling Championship. And we will get some thoughts from the champion, Scott Recksteiner, on the eve of this all-important title defense against Jason, the man who has literally demolished all the opponents he's been in the ring against so far in just a matter of a few seconds. But tomorrow night, Jason is in there against the world champion. We'll get the champion's thoughts in just moments. Moments. Tag team battle. It'll be Calypso Jim and El Bracero Supermax. What a dynamic duo they make up. And they will be facing the ex-champion, the great Wojo, and his tag team partner, the trader Chris Carter. Cowboy Rex Bodie has his long-awaited match against the Bulldog, Bulldog Don Kent, tomorrow at the Hotel Sofitel. Plus, the world tag team champions in singles action tomorrow night. It'll be the Polynesian Wildman to meet Rookie of the Year 86, Rick Sampson, and Prince Mama Mohammed takes on Denny Cass, plus the Golden Lion tomorrow night. And remember, and let's emphasize free parking. Won't cost you a cent. Just pull on into the Vistula Garage at the corner of Cherry and Summit Streets tomorrow night, 8 o'clock, the Hotel Sofitel, and as promised, we welcome the World Heavyweight Champion. Scott, it's close. It's tomorrow night, and I know you are super psyched for Jason. That's right. I tell you, Terry, Chris Carter made a mistake, and he's going to make another one. First, he insulted my family, saying my father was a camp counselor. And his second mistake is when he shows up to Hotel Cellar, because I'm going to be running wild, Jason! Chris Carter, you get in my way, I'm gonna rock you too. I tell you what, Terry, my fans, I promise them, if I don't rip the face off, the mask off, Jason, I tell you, if I don't do that, I'm gonna quit wrestling. So you're saying then that we are gonna see what's underneath that hockey mask or whatever it is, or you'll quit? That's right, well, I promise my fans I deliver. Okay. And if then. I don't do that, but I don't know, I might do it. You got it all on the line then, literally all on the line, the goal and, and literally your entire career. Tomorrow night, Scott Rexteiner against Jason at the Hotel Sofitel.